Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and here on my channel I make mostly crystal videos, sometimes spiritual videos, small business videos, fun vlogs, and more. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe because I put out new videos at least once a week. Today we're going to be talking about not one specific crystal, but a group of different crystals and that is aventurine. So what exactly is aventurine? First of all, here is the correct spelling of the word aventurine. It is not adventurine. Aventurine is a type of quartz that has tiny inclusions of other minerals, usually mica, which give it a sparkle. These inclusions can be very large and noticeable, giving it a very prominent sparkle, or they can be smaller, which just give the crystal a bit of color. This sparkly feature is called aventurescence. Since aventurine is a type of quartz, it is a 7 out of 10 on the most scale of hardness. Aventurine itself is not a specific mineral, it's classified as a type of rock. It is a quartz with inclusions. It can't be a mineral because it doesn't have any definite composition. The mineral inclusions and amounts can vary. Aventurine is one of the less water safe crystals that we've talked about. It's not dangerous by any means, but leaving it in water for too long can cause damage to the stone. Rinsing the stone is fine, but because of these inclusions, Soaking it for extended periods of time can change the color or break the stone or cause it to oxidize and rust. Salt water isn't recommended for aventurine for the same reasons. It can cause it to rust, change color, or break down quickly. Aventurine can go in the sun for a short period of time, but as with most crystals, don't leave it out for too long. It can fade the color. Because aventurine has a hardness of seven, this makes it a pretty good crystal for using in jewelry and wearing every day. Not many things are going to scratch it up. In my past crystal chat videos, I've forgotten to mention crystal elixirs because I kind of forget that this is something that people actually do. But as always, I never recommend any crystal to be put in water that is going to be consumed. While aventurine isn't dangerous, you never know what kind of minerals can seep into the water if you are soaking the crystal in it, not to mention polishing chemicals germs, I just would never recommend soaking a crystal in water and then consuming it. If you want to utilize a crystal's energy in some sort of water mixture, you can do so without directly soaking the stone in said water. So let's talk about some of the popular varieties of aventurine that you may have seen. The most common type of aventurine out there that you've probably seen is green aventurine, and green aventurine gets its color from fuchsite inclusions, which is a green variety of mica. Green aventurine is often mistaken for jade, but genuine jade isn't often confused with aventurine, if that makes sense. I notice a lot of the times at my in-person events when I'm selling green aventurine, I have like little carvings of it that people are drawn to, and people will come up and ask if it's jade most of the time. If you are unsure, the crystal in question is probably green aventurine. Aventurine is very, very common and quite inexpensive, whereas jade is much less common and more expensive. Aventurine is also known for its aventurescence. It has that noticeable sparkle that jade does not have. And even lower quality aventurine that isn't super sparkly has a much more grainy appearance than jade does. There's different types of jade, but typically jade is less grainy and has more of a dull appearance than aventurine. Aventurine also is just a very distinct green color that differs from any type of jade. Next is red aventurine, also known as strawberry aventurine. This variety gets its color from hematite, magnetite, or red muscovite inclusions. This material is most commonly called strawberry quartz on the market, but this isn't 100% correct because strawberry quartz is actually a different thing that is much more rare and expensive and difficult to find. This strawberry aventurine is also known as tansberry quartz because some of the material comes from Tanzania. This material is also found in Russia and Brazil. I've also seen this material called cherry tanzarine. Regardless of whatever name it is given, you can be sure that this material is a variety of aventurine. Sometimes the color of this material can come from actually lipidolite as opposed to the other minerals I mentioned. Sometimes lipidolite can show up as a more pinky hue, which is why sometimes people give it an entirely different name. I really don't like trade names like this because it is unnecessarily confusing, making people think that this is like an entirely different stone, but Strawberry Quartz, Strawberry Aventurine, Red Aventurine, Russian Red Aventurine, 
Tansberry Quartz and Cherry Tanzarine are all names for this red type of aventurine. Now on to genuine strawberry quartz. This is a rare material found only in Mexico, Kazakhstan, and Morocco, but most of it from these locations is entirely mined out. Strawberry quartz is typically more expensive and sold in much smaller pieces than strawberry aventurine. This genuine strawberry quartz is given its color from hematite inclusions, and in person it looks very different from red aventurine. I have a genuine piece of strawberry quartz from Soul Body Gems. They've gotten both of these materials tested and they do sometimes have genuine strawberry quartz for sale. I wish I could show you the piece I have. It's like this big and I was going to show you, but I like dropped it into the carpet and I lost it. That's how small it is. But basically in person, it kind of looks like red rutile. Like it's not speckly sparkles like aventurine is. Next up is green strawberry quartz. Green strawberry quartz is just another name for green aventurine. It looks a little different. Typically crystals that are categorized as green strawberry quartz are super sparkly and look obviously just like a green version of strawberry quartz. A lot more sparkly than normal green aventurine would be. It's a beautiful stone, but it's not anything rare. Another example of why trade names can be confusing because I've seen people debate if a crystal is green aventurine or green strawberry quartz. They're both green varieties of aventurine just from different areas with different types of inclusions. Another type of aventurine is blue aventurine, and blue aventurine gets its color from dumortierite inclusions. I hope that's how you say it. Yellow aventurine is another very common type and is caused by muscovite mica inclusions. Sometimes yellow aventurine can look similar to golden healer quartz, but it is distinguished by its sparkly, more spotty inclusions. Aventurine is also going to be more opaque than Golden Healer, which is very glassy. Golden Healer Quartz has inclusions of iron that almost look like they were painted onto surfaces within the stone. Aventurine is also more grainy and Golden Healer is very glassy and transparent. Yellow Aventurine can also sometimes have a slightly peachy color. Purple Aventurine is another variety and it is caused by lapidolite inclusions. Aventurine can come in just about any color depending on what inclusions are inside the quartz. It's pretty common to see aventurine in not very exciting colors like tan, gray, brown. When it comes to quality of aventurine, there isn't a huge difference between low and high quality. Aventurine doesn't really have a high quality option. A stone with more mineral inclusions may have a more vibrant, saturated, noticeable color which would be more sought after. Stones with larger inclusions that give it more of a sparkle are also more popular as opposed to ones with really small inclusions that aren't very sparkly. Of course, the varieties that are pink or green are going to be more popular than the boring colors like gray or brown. But for the most part, aventurine quality is just pretty standard all across the board. Unfortunately though, sometimes this unsaturated aventurine can be dyed to increase the color. I usually see this with green aventurine. I don't know if I've seen it with any other color of aventurine before, but it's pretty common actually with green aventurine. Sometimes it can be tricky to tell if the stone has been dyed or if it just has a saturated color because it has more of these inclusions. With dyed crystals, the dye tends to accumulate in cracks and crevices within the stone. So if you see it collecting in these areas more so than other areas, this may mean that it has been dyed. And a way to test if your crystals has been dyed is to use acetone tone nail polish remover and put it on a q-tip or cotton ball or whatever and rub it on the stone preferably in a spot that is rough or that you see this potential dye accumulating if the color is from natural inclusions it won't rub off but dye will most likely rub off for the spiritual healing properties of aventurine first we'll talk about green aventurine and then we'll talk about strawberry aventurine because these are two of the most popular ones green aventurine is associated with the heart chakra and is a great stone for luck and abundance aventurine is great for manifesting money and success and is definitely the stone you want to carry with you if you have any sort of competition or event that requires a little extra boost of luck. Aventurine is great for increasing all-around physical health. It is also great for emotional healing and growth. Working with Aventurine can open your eyes to new opportunities and help you move forward in life with courage and optimism. Strawberry Aventurine is also associated with the heart chakra and aids in emotional healing and expressing emotions. It is great for opening the heart chakra and provides loving support for working through traumas and difficult times. Strawberry Aventurine is also great for lovingly connecting to the people around you and having overall more positive experiences in life. Strawberry Aventurine helps you to believe in yourself and find your true calling and talents. It is a great stone for self-improvement in a loving, caring way, 
and creating new friendships. So that's all I have for you today about adventuring. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something new. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, and comment down below which crystal you would like to see me talk about next or which topic you would like to see me talk about next. It doesn't have to be a specific crystal. Also check out my crystal shop, cosmicgeology.com. You can use code YouTube for a discount on any order at any time. It will be linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.